This is the heat map module for the Earl Boyd's project. I'm going to try and bang through this. There's a ton, and I need to get under the 10 minute YouTube limit. Uh, the heat map module, it's a gen server behavior, uh, public API, uh, gen server uh, calls, uh, holds a dictionary of cells. Uh, each cell is an amount of heat, and then how many dissipation cycles, and then various variables to control how far the heat goes out. It goes out in concentric squares, and then how fast it dissipates, and what the difference is between each square. If it, drops off very quickly or drops off slowly. Here's our public API. It just casts and calls to the gen server process. These are called by the modules. And then the, the gen server process actually handle them after it gets called or casted to. So you can update, um, uh, these are all the private, actually the internal functions. So let's cover the uh, gen server uh, calls first. So if you, cast, if you call heat, it just calls heat underscore. If you call map, it just uh, gives you back the entire dictionary. If you call render, it calls render cells. Uh, if you cast to it stop, it stops. If you cast to it um, two, it's a point that um, a cell is being inserted to that it updates that with the add fun. And if you call from two, then it removes using the remove fun. It calls an update with that fun to remove it and then calls update with the add fun to add it. And then if it gets a, a, a message, not a cast or a call, but just a message saying dissipate, then it will kick off a um, a cycle of dissipating after cycle time. Cycle time is an environment variable. This function just grabs that environment variable. If you get anything else, it's just logged to the console. So now that we've seen the public interface and how it gets, uh, how we communicate with our gen server, let's see what these things are actually doing. So update takes an update fun fun, which is kind of goofy. So what you do is you pass to update, you pass one of these functions, either add fun or remove fun. They're a function that return that takes a value and returns a function that uses that value. So we can add or remove by the same amount. I can say call the add fun with an amount and generate a function that will add it or call the remove fun with an amount and it'll generate a function that removes it. This is so that we can pass it to the dictionary update. Dict up, uh, um, is it dict update? We'll see, yeah, dict update. And then this, this function will generate a function that we that the dictionary can use. So update. Uh, calculates the amount that we're going to start with, uh, counts, calculates a bunch of concentric squares, the top left and bottom right of each concentric square, and then calls update on that square, the square defined by the top left and up, uh, upper right, and then a, uh, an accumulator has the, the update function function and the amount of heat that we currently have, the cells in the dictionary, and these uh, squares defined by maximum, minimum, x, y coordinates. And once we've generated uh, new dictionaries by uh, recursively going through with uh, lists fold, then we'll filter out any cells that don't have any heat left. So this goes through and takes all those squares and calls update square. Update square will generate the square, all the cells that are part of that square with the maximum and minimum, and nothing inside, just the outer rim of that square, the outside cells. Then it'll call update cell on each of those. And then with the next in the accumulator, it'll take off um, the amount of heat that it's going to add by fall off. So every time a square gets drawn or uh, gets updated, uh, the in uh, I think that the square outside of it will get less heat. So you'll get more heat in the center, and then it'll it'll dissipate, or it'll spread out at that time. And then dissipation is another another thing where over time we get rid of any heat that's in a cell. And so this one uh, recursively calls, uh, well not recursively, but it uses lists fold to go over all the points in a square and call update cell. So the, the heat map is broken into a grid of cells, not per pixel, because that would be onerous. So each square has an X and a Y, has its X's and Y's. So this is a square of cells. Uh, that's how we generate the square, sorry. So update cell, you take a point, the update function function, and the amount and the cells, which is a dictionary. So we call it dict update on um, each of or on each point in that square, each cell. And so each cell is at a point, that's the key. And then if, if there is a cell already there, we call this update function function um, with an amount to generate the function to um, update that point. If there isn't a cell at that point, we just create a new one with that heat. And then once we're done, we pass back our accumulator with our new dictionary. So that should be it. Then we render cells. Uh, we fold over with render cell over each of the cells and we pass back a 
a, a prop list that has a canvas tagged tuple and an objects tagged tuple that will get um, generated, turned into JSON and sent to the web page. Then there's render cell. Uh, each cell will, that's, we're going to fold over the cells with render cell and it'll calculate how much red should be in the cell and it will generate a shape with the shape module. So this is specifying all the different things, the color, the X, Y, gradients, whatever. Then heat, uh, different voids that are drawing themselves and moving around on the canvas will need to know how much heat is around them. So they'll call heat with the point that they're at, not the X, Y coordinate on the canvas, but rather what cell they're in. So they'll find their center point and figure out what cell that is and ask for the heat around those cells. And so it gets the surrounding points, but not the point that they're actually in. And for each of those surrounding points, it uh, will get the amount of heat and pass that back. And these will be um, relative coordinates. So your X minus one, or your X plus one, or your X, your Y minus one, your Y, or your Y plus one. And then there's some dissipation that goes on because I don't want boys to do it backwards. So I'm gonna leave the heat that they've previously generated behind them. So it's constantly moves them to push forward. And so I call dissipate every once in a while, and that will go through map over dissipate cell and then filter out anything that doesn't have any heat anymore. Dissipate cell takes each cell, which has an amount of heat and a number of dissipation cycles. And this is, I think this logic is screwed up. Anyways, um, it will set up uh, how much dissipation, how much it should dissipate. And if it has any heat, it, it will dissipate it and then just pass back a new cell. And this is only for cells that have um, an integer amount of dissipation cycles where it's greater than zero. Otherwise, we don't do anything. Uh, this is used to filter out cells that don't have any heat. Uh, we do that up here. Filter has amount, so it just breaks into, uh, just looks into that cell's amount. And I could have done that with a when, uh, but this returns true anyway, so it just looked cleaner. And then cycle time just goes into an environment variable. So there you go, that's a super fast update so I can fit in under the, um, the YouTube time limit of how the heat map uh, allows Boyd, the autonomous uh, object processes to update themselves, how they can find out what the heat is around them from other processes, and then how the animation controller can ask this thing to actually render itself. And then you can um, run the project or go to the overview video and see what it looks like when the heat map is being drawn in a canvas beside the heat map where the or beside the canvas where the boys are being drawn.